What is the role of actors in a world that no longer needs actors? Yes, this is another AI video. I did warn you we'd be doing quite a few of these, but let that question sink in for a second because it is an interesting one. Right now, of course, as I'm sure many of you are aware, the Writers Guild and the Screen Actors Guild in America are both on strike, which has brought Hollywood to, well, a pretty much a complete standstill, as the entire movie and entertainment industry has grinded to a halt as nobody is willing to do their jobs anymore. But the reason for this is primarily because of the divide over the use of artificial intelligence to, well, straight up supplant and eventually outright replace actors and writers, which raises several interesting questions. For example, the actors themselves, obviously, are asking for their rights to be extended, to be protected against impersonation by AI. But what right do they really have to do this? If, theoretically, you could create an entire movie without a single actor in it, what then is the argument for the existence of a job, a profession, called an actor? Hmm. Because seemingly right now, the actors are basically stating that you need us, industry, you need us, you have to have us, otherwise you'll be dead overnight. But is that true? As one of the interesting things is that the um, Writers Guild, the Actors Guild, right now are making it very clear that they wa don't want people to boycott the companies. They don't want people to boycott Hollywood or Netflix or the corporations because, well, they're the ones who sign their checks. In a world where AI can do the same job as an actor, it isn't Netflix that's going to go bankrupt. It is the actor. As right now, they seem to be, um, well, I, I don't think they've actually thought about it that deeply, but there is no ethical or moral reason why a company should be forced to use an actor if they could elect not to. Or if there is, I haven't come up with one. Now, you could argue quality, potentially, because there are certain things that only that spark of creativity, of human ingenuity, can create. One could argue that real-life actors could create a superior product, but is that really true? And more importantly, is that true of the current crop of actors and writers? I mean, think about it. Recently, for example, we saw the release of the latest Indiana Jones movie, The Dial of Destiny, starring, of course, Harrison Ford in one of his biggest roles as Indiana Jones. Harrison Ford is 81 years old. He was born during the second mother-humping world war. The man is a relic along the same lines as the Tiger Tank of the battleship. And yet, he is still one of our biggest mainline action heroes? Are you shitting me? Where, where are the replacements? Where is the Harrison Ford of today? Hell, where is the Sylvester Stallone of today? Where is the Arnold Schwarzenegger of today? We don't really have one. I mean, uh, the closest we've got is what, like, uh, Michael Michael B. Peterson? Is that his name? The guy who's uh, playing Creed now in the new sort of kind of Rocky-esque movies. And even then, the only reason why that role exists is because of Rocky which preceded it. He isn't creating something new. He isn't bringing a spark of ingenuity or excellence. He's simply riding somebody else's coattails. And even then, I think he's like 38 as well. Um... What about Chris Hemsworth? He has more of a claim to fame in that regard because he has been making great strides with the recent Extraction series, where he's delivered quite the performance. I watched both of them recently, and yeah, they're pretty good. I wouldn't rank them up amongst the greatest of action films in the previous you know, years, but years or decades. But it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but even then, Chris Hemsworth too is like 40 years old. We, we don't seem to be getting a new crop 
of grand, great, big, splash hit stars. And even when we do, uh, like for example Henry Cavill's majestic performance in The Witcher, which made that show a success, they couldn't write him out of the show quickly enough because he cared too much. In the current ecosystem and sphere of influence of Hollywood, creativity, that spark of ingenuity, that geniusness, well, it seems to outright smother it into the ground, which again makes me ask the question, in a world where we don't need actors, what possible reason is there for the profession of actor to exist. And you can pretty much mirror this one to one for the writers as well. In a world where the current year produces nothing but the rings of power or She-Hulk and then they complain about not getting paid enough for creating She-Hulk, which frankly you should be penalized rather than rewarded, what, what is the possible argument for not replacing you with a typewriter? There, there really isn't one. Now again, you could argue the flash in the pan. An interesting question that will be raised and presumably eventually answered over time, presuming we don't crush AI underneath the boot of regulation, that is, is can AI create the Lord of the Rings. And I mean that as in how Tolkien created it from the ground up. Could AI build a universe like Tolkien did? A complex setting with a mythological backstory, with lore, with a rich history, with a great deal of depth to it, and an, well, to create an epic, essentially, out of thin air. Now, I would I'm 50-50 on it, because on the one hand, even Tolkien did not create something from nothing. He used a lot of inspiration. He drew a lot of it from Norse mythology, for example. And in certain cases, he even took, you know, full-on pieces and parts and names and things, and just was like, okay, that, 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 put that in there, put that in there, and I'll try to weld it all together. Could an AI do that? Probably. It too could simply go, okay, um, create for me an original new world that doesn't base itself on any pre-existing entity. And it could go like, okay, uh, Aztec futurism. And voila, there you have something new. But would it be good? Well, maybe. It's the question of the, the thousand monkeys with a thousand typewriters eventually creating Shakespeare. If you had the AI just pump out ten thousand stories and then you have the now unemployed writers read through them all it might produce gold we don't know just yet that is going to be one of the big questions that ar production might eventually answer but to take this one step further if again we assume that ai can replace actors and writers what is the role of an actor in a world that not, does not require actor? So we've made the quality argument, but what about the necessity argument, the spiritual argument, the, yeah, but would we really want to replace actors with robots arguments? Wouldn't we lose a certain spark there? Well, here's the thing. Right now, the greatest wellspring of creativity is not Hollywood. It's the independent sphere, the main string, uh, main string, see more correctly, of creativity in gaming does not come from AAA titles, it comes from indies. In a future where anyone could create an, an epic trio, tri English is difficult once again apparently, an epic trilogy of movies based on whatever they wanted. If somebody is sitting there with this genius idea for a universe in their brain but they really they don't have the resources to create it, they don't have the money, they don't have the time, they don't have the effort, they don't have the artistic talent, they don't have the money to buy all of those things, what if that person could turn to an AI and go, okay, I've got a fantastic idea, make this for me, and then he produced it. What are the odds that wouldn't be just as good as, at the very least, Rings of Power? What are the odds that wouldn't be, at the very least, just as good as the remake of Total Recall or the Dial of Destiny? The odds seem pretty damn good, and frankly, could you imagine if somebody, like, like the great uh, creatives of, the, of our time, right, if Stanley Kubrick could create anything he wanted, don't you think he would have made something even better with limitless creativity? 
Don't you think that um, George Lucas is perhaps a bad example, seeing as he was reined in by people around him quite frequently, but if he could create anything he wanted, the most over-the-top, high-flying version of Star Wars imaginable, don't you think he'd make something pretty good about it? And so on and so on. If every person and their mother could create their own perfect vision, would we not then in turn actually instead have something for everyone? And by making it exclusive as well, because here's of course the thing, right now gaming and Hollywood and hobbies in general are trying to aim more and more towards that elusive ephemeral wider audience to make things bland and uninteresting. As a fan of Warhammer Fantasy, I have ample experience with this after Age of Sigma, which took all of the uniqueness, the character, the soul out of Warhammer and squashed it into the forced shape of an over-the-top fantasy bullshit universe where nothing ever actually truly matters. If instead you could have 10,000 settings, each catering to a specific niche, and that doesn't need an audience of millions because it's created by one guy or a group of people, wouldn't that create vastly superior products? Don't you, uh, like everyone out there, who has a favoured thing, a favourite movie or a favourite hobby or a favourite setting or a favourite franchise, wouldn't you much prefer to have that thing you had before it was popular and crushed by the mainstream media and Hollywood? Wouldn't you prefer to have old school Warhammer? Hell, I know there are people out there who refuse to play any sort or entertain any lore after like the 90s, for example, or even older, who, who still play old Hammer. Wouldn't it be fantastic if you could create that universe for you and your friends? And if that is true, if you could do that, wouldn't, again, the moral argument that, oh, we need actors to give us these things for us, feel even more hollow? Frankly, it seems to me that the only argument for why we should champion to retain actors at all is that they want us to. And of course, it is also in part the good old-fashioned parasocial relationship. This is the interesting thing as well. 20 years ago, an actor strike like this would be over like that, regardless of the tools at the hands of the studios, because the fans would be outraged. What do you mean you're you're setting, sending Leonardo DiCaprio out on the street? What the hell do you mean you're you know sending Tom Cruise out to pasture? These are our idols, goddammit. You will not do this. What do you mean you're throwing Will Smith out of his house, etc.? But now? <laughs> Who the hell cares? If Will Smith was to be evicted today. A lot of people would probably laugh, especially after the slap that was heard around the world. Uh, actors simply do not have the elevated position they do anymore. And those who do are the ones who still produce the content of the old school. Tom Cruise is still popular today because he delivers a Mission Impossible. And it's simply just more Mission Impossible because he delivers Top Gun. And it is goddamn Top Gun. He is a person who looks at the audience, the people who made him what he is, and recognizes that fact. He says, I am what I am because of you. Whereas the current crop of actors says, I'm the star, support me, peasant. That is the absolute, unavoidable, sheer key divide of the current and the old generation of actors. The difference between a good actor, someone who might actually deserve the support, and the current crop. The, oh, the, the Brie Larsons of the world. Oh, misogyny. Oh, patriarchy. Oh, if you don't watch my movie, you're a misogynist. If you don't oh, God. Like the recent um, woman king, uh, Viola Davis, was that her name? Who said that if you don't go watch her movie, you are um, continuing the narrative that women of color cannot be box office uh, successes. They're not appealing, they're not, oh please, please come watch my movie, I'll be so grateful. It's like, watch me, bigot, or else. This would be unthinkable before. 
Because, again, those actors are recognized that they are only actors. They're only allowed to be what they are because of an audience that watches them. This is something that I'm aware of every day, for example, and I'm by no stretch of the imagination a celebrity. I am a small-scale YouTuber with reasonable success in a couple channels now. I can make a living out of this, and the only reason I can do that is because you are watching me. It is because you are supporting me, sending me super chat via Patreon, etc. All of these stuff. I cannot do this without you. And this is something that the celebrities have forgotten. Because the brand, the word celebrity has come to mean something above us all. That exists on a greater, grander plane. Whereas in reality, we don't need them. We, we need the characters that they pretend to be. We need the personas that they represent. But the moment a .jpeg can do the same job, they are easily replaced. And there seems to be no argument as to why we should not. Same for writers. Same for game creators. Same for, well, anything that can be created en masse. Bearing in mind, again, still, that the argument of the spark of creativity remains a valid one. There will always be someone who can make something greater than this. There will always be an Arnold Schwarzenegger who manages to create an iconic performance in the form of the Terminator. There will always be a Sylvester Stallone and a Rocky. There will always be a Tom Cruise. But these are the vanishingly small minority of characters, though they will probably grow more common as more and more people will have the ability to express themselves. Perhaps we in fact will not have fewer Tom Cruises in the future if everyone has the ability to create their own AI entertainment. Perhaps in fact we will have a hundred more. Perhaps instead of having a famous director, we will have a hundred famous career directors, each one speaking to and supplying his particular brand of specialized content to an audience that values and accepts it. Instead of the, the summer blockbuster, we will have the next creation of so-and-so, who speaks to maybe 10, 20,000 people, but they love it. Or another guy who makes something for another 30,000 people, and so on. Honestly, I view the, shall we be so bold as to call it the democratization of entertainment, as a near universal good, as a positive. The less power is gathered in the hands of actors, writers, and studios, mind you, the better. As I can damn near guarantee you that what the studios will try to do, and what some are already doing, like Adobe, for example, is to try to create rules and regulations that make it so that AI is for them and not for you because they have the ability to build up the databases. They have the ability to create their own database of actors' movements, of writing styles, of plot lines, of character designs, etc, etc, and then create a walled garden of this, where they get to draw from it, but everybody else is impersonating. At which point, whoever has the greatest army of lawyers get to point to the other party and go, I used a yellow dress in this show, you're infringing on my copyright now, sir. That's the nightmare scenario, and hopefully one we will avoid, because um, if we enter into another era of AI creativity with Disney's brand of copyright management, for example, um, then there will, there, there will be no democratization of entertainment. There will only be a further hoarding into a handful of companies that have the financial muscle to build their own databases for which the AI to draw upon, and more importantly, the financial bullying capabilities to bust everybody else's asses for the tiniest and most minute choice of color palette for their own projects. Anyways, we have uh, wandered somewhat off the topic of the original idea here, but uh, this is a stream of consciousness video, as you can quite clearly tell. And again, I just find the topic of AI deeply, deeply fascinating, so I hope you'll excuse my ramblings here.
Anyways, do let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Like, what is the reason for actors to continue to exist if we don't need them? Is there a, a moral or an ethical argument? Is there an imperative? Is there a reason why we should keep them around at all? Bearing in mind the multitude failures of the current generations. Do you believe that AI will be used for the people and by the people? Or do you, you think it will be used against the people by the 1%? Ah, I hope not. But I'll wrap it up there. I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.